My name is Jamie Fox. I am a teacher at Southville High School in Knox County. I am really excited to talk to you all about moles today. First things first, um, if you want to follow along with this lesson, you can download the papers and the resources at the knoxschools.org website. If you click the Student Resources tab, you can see those files. You can download them or follow along digitally. Also, you can tweet what you've learned at KCS Science on Twitter, and we would love to hear from you. If this video is hard to understand, we have some ways to help. One, you can turn on closed captions. Two, you can adjust the playback speed to slow it down. Three, you can consider watching short clips, pause, listen and watch again. Or four, you can ask someone in your home to watch the video with you, talk to your partner, collaborate as you've learned. All right, so before you begin moles, there's a few things you need to know. In order to be successful, you should be able to do all of these things. You should be able to understand why we use moles to measure, how it's related to a balanced equation, how to predict the number of moles of a substance with a balanced equation, use conversion units for moles and understand what they are, know how to set up a mole conversion problem properly, and also how to convert between moles, mass, and particles. All right, so what is a mole? A mole is a unit that we use to quantify a group of things, um, and actually it's a group of atoms. And people use quantifying things by groups a lot of different ways. And one way we use this in real life is that we sell apples three different ways. You can sell them by count. So if you go to a fruit stand, you can buy apples by one, two, or three apples, and your price is based on how many apples you purchase. In a supermarket, you weigh them, and based on the weight of an average apple, you're going to be charged that amount. At an orchard, if you were to buy apples, you could get a bucket or a bag or a bushel, and they know what volume is in that bushel, and they know what the volume of the average apple is. And so they charge you based on the volume. So we can, we can literally um, count things by count, mass, or volume. And knowing that, we can also put that in a mathematical way we can understand and that we can actually use those numbers. So if we talk about it by count, we can see on the screen that we have one dozen apples equals 12 apples. Now that's an equality we can use to set up what we call a conversion factor. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And by mass, one dozen apples equals two kilograms of apples. And by volume, it's 0.2 bushels of apples. So really, when you're looking at this, I want you to be able to think about how you would create your own grouping name for quantifying something. And we'll say maybe it's seeds, maybe it's sunflower seeds. If you could group a certain number of sunflower seeds and call it any name that you would like, I want you to think about that. Um, and then I want you to write down how many seeds are equal to that quantity. So you can make up however many seeds and give it a name and you don't have to count that many seeds anymore. You can use that more efficiently to quantify a large number of seeds. I also want you to hypothesize at least one reason scientists might want to group things when they quantify them. So to give you an example, this is what I used. Um, my last name is Fox, so in order to make it my quantifier, I said one fox of seeds is equal to 25 seeds. One fox of it weighed 50 grams on a scale. How many seeds would you have in three foxes of seeds? All you would have to do is look at my equality. I know that 25 seeds is equal to one fox. And if I took three foxes, I would multiply 25 by three. So I should have 75 seeds is equal to three foxes. Also, think about it if you don't have perfect numbers. What if you had 1.25 foxes of seeds? How much would it measure on a scale in grams? Remember that one fox is 25 seeds, which is also equal to 50 grams. So all you're going to do is take however much your seeds weigh, which is 50 grams. You're going to take your 50 grams and you're going to multiply it by 1.25 seeds. So if I have a little bit more than one, we can reason that it'll be a little bit more than 50 grams, right? So that way we can logically deduce wrong answers. Just like we did with the apples, scientists in chemistry use this for atoms. Atoms are so tiny that you have to group a whole lot of them together to really get something that's, that's heavy enough to quantify. So we use scientific notation to talk about Avogadro's number. So in one mole of carbon, if I collected 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon and I were to put it on a scale, it would weigh 
12 point, technically 12.01 grams of carbon. And sulfur would be 32.1 grams. Iron would be 55.8 grams. So all of those have the same number of atoms. It just means that each of those atoms weigh a little bit differently. And so we can identify elements based on some of its properties, like its weight. We're gonna talk about conversion units next. So pull out your notes and work along with me. All right, so using um, what we know, we can compile what we call conversion units or things that are equal to each other so that we can convert from one unit into another. We see that one mole of water, or a group of water molecules or atoms or particles, is equal to an X number of grams. And the way we figure that out is we use molar mass every time we have uh, something in grams for the unit. If you have water, which is H2O for the formula, that means that the two elements that you have, it begins with a capital letter, that is the beginning of a new element. Since we have two capital letters, we have two elements here. Um, we have H, which stands for hydrogen, and we have O, which stands for oxygen. We have two hydrogens, one oxygen, and all we're gonna do is multiply them by what they have for their mass on the periodic table. Hydrogen, if you look above, I have it as 1.01 grams. And for oxygen, it's 15.999, so we can round that to 16.0 grams. So two times 1.01 .01 is 2.02. .02. And we have 16 times 1 is 16. When you get that all together, you're going to have 18.02, and that's your molar mass. Molar mass is the one conversion unit that's going to be different than the rest because it's going to be dependent on what elements make up that compound. So when we look at B, it says one mole of water equals how many liters of H2O. We're assuming this is at standard temperature and pressure, or STP. That gives us 22.4 liters of H2O. Now, the really cool thing about liters is that it doesn't matter what those uh, individual elements are. Anytime you see liters, you can go ahead and put 22.4 in front of it if that substance is at STP. Lastly, we have particles. One mole of H2O is equal to how many particles of H2O? And this one is much like the unit liters. Particles represents a few things. They could be things like atoms, formula units, or molecules. And for those, we will always use Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of H2O. We write this again in scientific notation so that we don't write out all of those zeros because when we add all of those atoms up, that makes one mole of our substance. So now let's use these and write them either on top or bottom or numerator and denominator as a conversion factor. So for the first part of this, I'm gonna use A, which is one mole is equal to 18.02 grams. I'm gonna put mole on the bottom. That means instead of writing it left and right, I can write this equality as a top and bottom or bottom and top. So it tells me to put mole on the bottom. That means that 18.02 is gonna go on top. So our conversion factor will look like this. Sometimes you need your mole to be on the numerator instead of the denominator. And we'll talk about what that means when we set these up because we'll need our units to cross out. They will cross out diagonally. So you can see the difference in um, putting our moles on the bottom right here and putting our moles on the top. It's the same thing as this. It's just not written left and right with an equal sign. We're actually putting it in a, in a conversion factor so that we can use it for a formula. See if you can try to do B and C on your own. Do it both as a numerator and a denominator for moles. You can either pause this video or I'll give you a few seconds to try. All right, check your answers with what we have given above. Now we can use, use to, set to set up our, set up our problem. problem. Number one says, how many total grams of carbon would you have in 2.50 moles of carbon? So we're gonna begin, always start with what you're given. What they give us is the number 2.50, and the unit is moles of carbon. So that's exactly what we wrote down right here. Notice that I have our conversion factor that we just talked about boxed in in yellow for you to see. Since the question asked us to go from moles into grams, I knew exactly what conversion unit to plug in. And I knew that because I start in moles, in order to cross out, Remember, I have to cross out diagonally. If I begin in moles, I have to put moles on the bottom. Whatever unit you begin with, that unit should be in the bottom of your conversion factor. That leaves us with grams on the top. Now, 
Another tidbit of information, when we're setting these up, you're gonna wonder, how am I calculating this? Well, anytime you see a one, you can basically ignore it because when you multiply by one or divide by one, you're just gonna get that same number. But the numbers that we have shown are 2.50 and 12.01. Now, something to note is that any number in the numerator you'll multiply and any number in the denominator you'll divide. So when I plug in my calculator 2.50 times 12.01, because 12.01 is on the top or the numerator, I get 30.0 grams of carbon as my answer. answer. For the next step, I want you to go ahead and try to figure out how you're gonna put that conversion in, whether moles should go in at the top or the bottom for number two. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. All right, so we are first gonna have to realize what goes in the bottom. Since we begin with grams, that's what they told us in the equation. That's the unit next to the number they give us. So we're gonna write 4.67 grams of NaCl down because that's what we start with. Whatever number they give you, that's what you start with. Then we're gonna figure out what we're trying to convert into. I'm gonna look at my unit that I'm given, which is grams of NaCl. And whatever I'm given, I'm gonna use that as what's on my denominator. So I'm gonna write grams NaCl. Okay. And one number should go in front of grams every time? Correct. That's its molar mass. And we've already calculated that right here for you. So we have 58.44 grams of NaCl on the bottom. Notice that these units, grams and NaCl and grams and NaCl will cross out. And it's all right if you want to write out the word grams or if you want to use G as an abbreviation. Either way is fine. Um, and so when we look at this conversion unit, what's on the other side? That's going to be one mole of NaCl according to our conversion factors. Now you can look and see that grams has crossed out. The unit that we have in the numerator is moles, and that matches what we've been asked for. So we can go ahead and look at our numbers, and we see 4.67. Since 58.44 is on the bottom or in the denominator, type in 4.67 divided by 58.44. That gives us 0 0.7999 moles of NaCl. I want you to do numbers three and four on your own. Check the answer key later to see how you're doing. Looking at the next step, we're gonna talk about liters to moles and moles to liters. Um, number five, I have an example already given for you. You're gonna look and see that we begin our question with 2.5 liters of carbon. And you have to remember that when mole is equal to 22.4 liters at STP, we're gonna assume that all of these are at STP just to make our lives a little bit easier. So given that information, we know that 2.5 liters of carbon. I'm going to abbreviate carbon as C, its element symbol. It's a little easier sometimes. You can do that or write it out. And we're going to write down what we know first. So the first thing we know is we have this. Write down what you're given in the problem every time. Second thing I'm going to identify is what we're trying to, to turn this into. What are we converting into? And that's going to be moles. Okay. So we're going to write down what we know first, which is what you have right here. And then we're going to go through and we're going to look at where it should be, numerator and denominator. And you see that we have 22.4 liters in the denominator. And that's because we can cross out liters of carbon and liters of carbon. You see your conversion factor here, just like in the previous. So instead of this being written left and right, we're going to write it top and bottom. Just like in our previous example, we could do one mole for every 22.4 liters on top or we could do 22.4 liters on top and one mole on bottom. You can do either one. It's just a matter of figuring out which one is better suited for your problem, what you begin with. Whatever you begin with, that unit should be in the bottom of your conversion factor. All right, and then you can see that I have 2.5 and that 22.4 is in the bottom. So we'll be dividing those two numbers. When you type in 2.5 divided by 22.4 in your calculator, you should get 0 0.11 moles of carbon. And moles is the unit because that's the numerator on top. Look at number six and see if you can work ahead. See if you can predict which conversion factor, whether moles should be as a numerator or denominator, in the yellow box. If you chose mole in the bottom, you're correct. That way our units will cross out. And since it's asking us in our problem to find volume right here, that's what needs to be in our numerator. And that makes sense because we can check it with our conversion factor. And we know that one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. So mole is a on the bottom and 22.4 is on the top or in the denominator and numerator. Since 22.4 is on the top, we're gonna multiply it to 2.5 moles. 
And here you'll see that we wind up with 56 liters of O2. Try seven, eight, and nine on your own. For number 10, you're gonna see I've already worked this problem just so you have a template to look at. It's the same exact setup as the last two types of problems, except that we're using particles here as our conversion unit. And in particles, the number that always goes in front of it is Avogadro's number, which is right here. And just like in the previous problems, we need to determine whether moles is gonna be in the top or in the bottom of the denominator of that problem. You'll see that for this problem, particles is what we were given first. That's what we wrote down in the beginning of our question. Whatever you're giving, you immediately write it down. Since the unit we have is particles of carbon, we are able to cross out particles of carbon if particles is on the bottom. So if particles is on the bottom of this problem, moles will be on the top. And since we're talking about carbon, it's gonna be one mole of carbon. Now, when you look at this problem, you're also gonna see that Avogadro's number is on the bottom or as a denominator. So denominators divide. So we're gonna type in our calculator, 2.3 times 10 to the 12th power divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power to get our answer. Start by looking at which way you would write your conversion units, whether moles should be in the top or bottom, given your equation. Note that we are given 12.7 moles of NaCl in the question, and that we are gonna begin with writing that down. All right, what I want you to do is look at where you're gonna put your conversion unit in. I've already got it boxed in in a yellow box for you. Are you gonna put moles on the top or the bottom of that? And then what other conversion union are you gonna put on the other side? Now you'll see that I put one mole in the bottom. You can also go ahead and make sure that you put NaCl there because <clears throat> that's the um, compound that we're talking about, and that moles will cross out, and it's gonna be moles NaCl, and that will also cross. And um, when you'll notice that I have particles in the top, and that's also of NaCl, because we're talking about the same compound through this whole conversion, okay? Um, now with that, once you cross out your moles and NaCl, you're gonna have particles NaCl on the top. All you're gonna have to do there is realize that Particles is the unit that they're asking for in our question, and that's exactly what's on the numerator. So we should end right here, and we know that we're getting the right answer. So what I'm going to do is take 12.7 and 6. Since Avogadro's number is on the numerator on the top of this equation, I'm going to multiply them. So 6 point, or 12.7 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, 7.65 times 10 to the 24th particles of NaCl. Solve 12 and 13 on your own and check the answer key later. You can also convert from one mole of an element or compound into another using a balanced equation. We also use this comparison called a mole ratio as your conversion unit. And what that means is if you see um, a, an, a balanced equation and there's not a number in front of it, that means that there's a one. So I like to go ahead and write those in just visually for me to see. Normally we don't write them in in science because if the fact that that compound or element symbol is written at all tells you there's at least one of them. So it's a bit redundant to write a one also, but it helps you visually to just look back and forth at the mole ratios. If that helps, you're welcome to do that. So for every one mole of CH4, it asks us how many moles we have of each different thing. And we have oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. So the first one says oxygen. And for every one mole of of methane or CH4, you're gonna have two moles of oxygen. So you're always gonna need twice as much oxygen gas as you do methane. Looking at the next step, we look at CO2. CO2 is in the same ratio. It has a one-to-one -one ratio of methane and carbon dioxide. So it will also have a one. So for every one mole of methane, you have one mole of carbon dioxide that'll be produced. Go ahead and try um, part C of number 14 and check the answer key for yourself. Part number 15, part A, is asking you something a little bit differently. What they're saying is, instead of one mole, what if we doubled the moles? So instead of one, we have two methanes. Instead of two oxygens, we now have four oxygens. Instead of one CO2, we have two. And instead of two waters, we have four. So if you double one of these amounts, you have to double the other moles or your coefficients. So for every two moles of CH4, how many moles of oxygen do we have now? 
we have four. For every two moles of methane, we will have two moles of carbon dioxide, according to this balanced equation. You could triple this, you could multiply it by one and a half, Whatever you do to one of those coefficients, you must do to the others because they all have the same proportion or ratio with one another. Finish part C on your own and check yourself with the answer key. Moving on to number 16, part A, you'll see that you have 0.73 moles of carbon dioxide. When I set up my equation, I know that I'm gonna put moles of carbon dioxide on the bottom as well so that they cross out. I also know that I'm gonna put moles of what I'm trying to find on top. So I'm looking for moles of O2. So when I write moles of O2 in the numerator, those are the units that my answer will be in. Now I need to decide where I find the numbers or look at the mole ratio between O2 and CO2. If I look at my balanced equation, I'll see that for every for every one carbon dioxide, I need two oxygen gas, it's a diatomic molecule, to make it. So I'm gonna reflect that there. The coefficient I have for my balanced equation for oxygen is gonna go here. So I need two moles of O2. And the coefficient I have for CO2, which is a one, is gonna go in front of its unit. So you're gonna always have double the amount of oxygen as you do carbon dioxide. And that makes sense based on our ratio. And now all I'm gonna do is multiply across since I have a two as a numerator, not a denominator. So you'll type in 0.73 times two. That gives you 1.5 moles of oxygen gas. Try part B and C on your own and check yourself with the answer key. Thank you for tuning in to all my students at South Dole. I miss you guys and can't wait to see you. Until next time, thank you, bye-bye.